is Stefan. Stefan, nice to meet you. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. And you? Yes, very, very well. Very, very well. Are you, um, are you after a big day of work on the, on the watchmaking? Yes, 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 a little bit tired. Uh, I finished uh, a half hour uh, ago. So. An hour ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of the things at Kudoki, uh, Stefan, every watch is touched by yourself. You're working on every single watch that is coming out of your workshop. So there yeah. are no, there's, no, there's no shortcuts, is it? No what? Uh, shortcuts. So there are no uh, short ways. There is a clear process and that's the process. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, Stefan, it's great, it's great to, um, to see you. You... Are you surprised to see where you are now? Uh, yes, of course. Um, it is um, a very huge success in the last two years. So um, if we come out with our new product line, um, the Handwerk Collection, um, yeah, we getting more and more interesting from the watch collectors. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's when, you, when you obviously decided to... Uh, push yourself and I know how hard it is because we did the same thing five years ago. Uh, we don't make watches, but we decided to go on our own, start our own business and that's already quite scary. But in your case, it was your art. And your art is quite particular as well because you are an engraver. Uh, you have with a, with a Kunstwerk collection, for example, a very expressive way of, uh, of art. And uh, so how scary was it at the beginning? Um, yeah, we, you are scared, scared or? No, if you were scared at the beginning when you started your own brand. Uh, no, no, no it, uh, it was, uh, yeah, I started, let me say, uh, 13, 13, 14 years ago next to the university and uh, it was only in my mind I have to do my own thing. Uh, yeah, that's um, so. And then I started the, the Kunstwerk collection, the artwork. Um, yeah, that was yeah. the How, beginning. Uh, what was the reason for you to be so inspired by, uh, you know, uh, skulls, octopus, octopus shape, very intricate shape? Did it happen because you love to engrave and skeletonize, or were you already passionate about these uh, mythological? Um, um, yeah, um, the reason is I'm I'm coming from the uh, from from the art. So uh, in my in my past, in, I was like a painter. Um, so and then um, as my work for Glashütte original um, as a watchmaker, I come in contact with skeleton watches uh, and I have to build the skeleton watches for Glasito original uh, 20, 20 years ago. Uh, and the normal skeleton watches, it, it was a little bit boring. So that's the reason why I, um, I was thinking about to find a way to do skeleton watches like, like art. Uh, not only to reduce the material, so um, my mind was, I have to do some like paintings in the watch, so that, yeah, that's the reason for the, for the uh, skull or octopus or, or different things, a lot of. That was, so that was, was also feeling your need to be expressive, expressive with your artistic side. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's, it's, all, uh, it's one reason. And the second reason was um, in, the, in the watch market, the, in this time, there was no um, skeleton watches or a skeleton brand like, like this before. Uh, you know, in, in the past, there was uh, Code Shuffle, for example, and, and uh, Armin Strom. Um, okay. yeah. okay. And it was always the... The, the, the clean uh, skeleton yeah. to, to, to try to reduce the maximum on, on the material. Um, yeah, and all, all skeleton watches look the same or was looking the same. So that was the second reason why I tried uh, to do some, some difference. 
It's very interesting. We were discussing the other day how before I'm in strong, even in the, in the watchmaking schools, there were no teaching about skeletonization. So it is, it is a new thing, although it sounds very natural now, the fact of you know, wanting to give the movement more air, more visibility. So uh, it is kind of orologically very justified. And do you, do you, I mean, it must be amazing for you to see that most brands now, they are trying obviously to do skeletonization. It's become a big, big thing. Yeah, uh, but the, the, it, you have in, in the last few years you had a, you have a lot of skeleton watches in in uh, in the market and uh, also from the brands. But the most of them are they are made with machines. So um, it is completely different to do a skeleton watch by hand, and you see the difference. Um, if you if you are interested in skeleton watches, then then you know this one is uh, handmade and this one is machine made. Uh, but also. Um, It is no knowledge in the watchmaking school, uh, also in my time in the school. So I, I have to learn it by my own. Um, I was trying a lot of uh, time to do it in, in a perfect way. So, and to see really the difference. And really like an artist, of course, you develop your own style that then is recognizable. No? It's your own style, it's clear, and it's there like a piece of art. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, very, very interesting. Um, Stefan, obviously you're based in Saxonia, which is this mythical land uh, in the northeast of Germany, where, of course, Glassuits and uh, you know, some other uh, legendary watchmakers, Langenzern, Geheine, etc., are based. Um, for those that are not familiar to that, first of all, independent watchmaking is not just about Switzerland anymore. These times are gone. And second, Saxonia has a very, very deep watchmaking tradition. Uh, yes, but I'm, I'm not uh, uh, really from Saxony, but I was born in the near from Berlin. But I was going to the watchmaking school in Glashütte, um, and then I met my wife, Eve, and but then we are traveling in the world. Uh, we live there, and we live there. Uh, and then one day we, we made the, the reason or the decision to change the place to Saxony because it's a beautiful country. Um, uh, and here are the, the watchmaking uh, heard. So, yeah. yeah. So and, and, and now we are here. And the, the, the point with the independent watchmaker, are, yeah, we, have, we don't have so much in Germany at the moment. The, the, the main... The main independents uh, are in Switzerland, so, uh, but we will try to do our best, uh, maybe to have more in the future. <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, you know, like the brands I have mentioned before, uh, there, have been, there has been recognition for the uh, Saxonian, uh, if you like, watchmaking tradition. Uh, but not many know that there is a big British influence no, in the Saxonian watchmaking tradition. And in Kudoke, in Kudoke timepieces, you can find that. Uh, yeah, if you go if you go back in the history, um, there was um, a very strong connection between the the old English uh, watchmaking um, genius and uh, the the uh, German. German watchmaking uh, craftsmanship in the past in Dresden. It was based in Dresden. There was a connection between this guys um, and the the English. The English traditional watchmaking was was influence um, to the German watchmaking. So the German watchmakers um, was looking to the to the English guys. Uh, Then they made some cooperations in the past, and that was the beginning of the uh, watchmaking industry in Saxony. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in a, especially in your Anwerk um, collection, those frosted, frosted plates, those uh, finishing, finishings that you propose, even the floral decoration of your mechanical caliber, uh, which is hand engraved, of course, is very reminiscent of the British tradition. Why is that? Did you want to discover this past again? Did you think that it wasn't 
so you know so many people were not aware so you wanted to get it out there or is it just simply because you like the style uh, different things um, the first the first thing was i was trying to to find a way um, next to the skeleton watches so i after after the some years the skeleton watch, watch um, was nearly perfect and then i was looking for i was looking for a new co collection line with with more traditional um, design so and in saxony you have um, always the the three quarter plate normally and i was looking for something different um, then i read all books between the connection in uh, england and dresden also uh, england and germany watchmaking connection and then i was looking for um, I was look in the, in the books the old English pocket watches, and I like the style with the balance cock. And then I was thinking about uh, how can I um, include the, the old traditional design in in a new movement. So and then that was the beginning to start the design thinking. And then uh, you know then we get the result of of the. Movement. I find it fantastic because, of course, you know, watchmaking, like any form of art, is a complex, uh, a complex series of historical facts. So uh, things didn't, didn't start one day in one place. Things are the result of a lot of contamination coming from different places until when everything concentrated in Switzerland. But this happened later. So watchmaking yep. started before in Germany, in Holland, in uh, France. England. France uh, and again the link with the British. So yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating. Do you find? Um, of course, we are all big fans of what George Daniels did. Of course, you know to uh, revamp the British watchmaking uh, uh, tradition or to restart from from a dead point. Now there are a few brands that are producing again in uh, in England, um, and I think it's a great great news. I don't know if you follow, but there are names like Garrick or Rebecca Struders. Yeah. yeah. Roger W. Smith, so it's, it's good to see. I follow more more these guys like uh, the the big brands. So yeah, <laughs> that's it's more it's more interesting. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And they have a very similar concept. Uh, with you, time is irrelevant. I mean, you make all your watches on your own. We are, for example, official retailers for uh, Kudoki watches, and we have to wait. We have to wait for the watches to be individually made. It takes time, but the beauty of it is that clients are more and more educated. They do understand that, and they do support that. My question is this, Stefan. How scalable is a Kudoki watches when you have to do everything by hand, and mainly it's you making the, the watches? Do you have limits that you have already set, or you're looking to, to, to grow a little bit? Yeah, um... It is always the same problem for the independents. Um, you have only two hands, yeah. um, and then we have. If you if you build watches in in our way or uh, like the other other independents, in uh, you need very special watchmakers for that, and you can't find a lot of them. So uh, you have you have a lot of watchmaker in the industry. They they are specialized in 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 the uh, some some steps in the in the process, but you can't find really good watchmakers. They they can do it from from A to Z, all the steps uh, by 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 their own. It, it, it's also the the point of the finishing. The watch the normal watchmaker they can they can put together the parts, but you have to do before the perfect finishing so that's yeah. that's that's a big a big challenge uh, for the most uh, people and then you have to you have to know how you can put together the parts with no scratches that's also a big uh, challenge so yeah um, so we will we will try uh, to do a little bit more we are looking for for watchmakers. We are we are hire them. Um, somebody is coming this year, so then we can a little bit go up with the production, but yeah, not a so but can, not a not a lot. Yeah, so you can educate and you can uh, 
you can explain your style to the future watchmakers that will bring obviously the name of Kudoku watches uh, forward in the future. Sorry, can you repeat the connection? So you can, you can train and you can educate the younger watchmakers to then support you to, uh, to, uh, yeah, to satisfy more customers. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that, it's also a big challenge to train a watchmaker because a normal, for me, uh, because I have of the, on, the, on, the other, uh, on one side, I have to, uh, to do the production the daily production of the watches because of the customer they are they are looking for the watches so and i need time to train the watchmaker so that's ah not easy this <laughs> <laughs> is stefan we have the same problem with the limited edition and we are only we only explain about the watches yeah. and the same thing to get people in our team of course it has to be people that understand you know the the mission of what we're doing I can only imagine when it when it's about making the watches. It's obviously it should be it's probably amplified. But Stefan, um, so once again we are live with Stefan Kudoki from Germany, uh, one of the most inspiring watchmaking stories of the last few years. And um, please please feel free to send your questions. I have a list of questions for Stefan, but I will jump on your questions if I see them popping in the comments. And I can see. Uh, Stefan, I think we have already answered the question from Smiley Coat asking why uh, is it difficult to find good watchmakers? No, actually, we haven't. We haven't. Why is it difficult to find good watchmakers, actually? It is, um, I don't know the situation in, in Switzerland. There is, maybe there is it a, a little bit more easier because of the lot of brands. Be, um, here in our area, we we have uh, in a, in in Glashütte in a watchmaking school i think 20 20 people per year maybe a little bit more a little bit less so then you have different levels of the watchmakers and then you have to find um, a watchmaker they can for me for my workshop they can do the finishing and they can do the uh, complete watch to put together all the parts, so to assemble the watch completely with the good finishing before, and the good f to do the finishing is not part of the of the school teaching process. Um, so, so you have to train. If you get the watchmaker, a normal watchmaker, then you yeah. have to you have to train him um, to the finishing techniques. Yeah, and when you're talking about hand engraving, hand finishing. Obviously, <clears throat> it can only take a lot of time. Yeah, and then is, uh, the next point is, um, in the past, it was normally that the watchmakers or the finisher, they do the finishing by hand. In our time, the most of the movement, the most watches or most watch movements, they are uh, finished with the machines. So it is not... You can uh, you cannot find somebody on the on the street uh, come in and and worked with me because there is no lo uh, no knowledge in the in outside in the country. Absolutely. So, of course, the then the the difficult part is that you want to satisfy the customers that wish to get the product because you know how many of our collectors are getting more and more frustrated with the big brands with these uh, waiting lists and policies of scarcity where you cannot get a watch for the next four, five, six years. So, but, but there are limits to that. So in, in the case of Kudoki watches, it's simply because the capacity is, uh, is limited. Um, so I guess the, uh, the, the next question, there is a question from uh, Watches and Words. Your watches are German made, but where do your customers come from uh, it's not Germany, is it? I could answer a little bit that question, but of course, uh, Stefan, uh, do you have a feeling of where your customers come from uh, generally? Yes, uh, outside of Germany. <laughs> 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 no, we uh, normally normally we have um, some some um, just a little quantity um, customers from Germany per year, but the most watches are going to the US or Australia or UK now, um, um, Asian markets. Yeah. 
yes. different Asian yeah. markets. Um, yeah, but the main at the moment the main market is uh, the US. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. At the limited edition as well, we see a great expansion in the US, in the UK, and in uh, in Asia. Uh, it's funny because you know, Stefan, I'm Italian, and the love for luxury watches started big time in Italy between the 70s and the 80s, uh, with the, you know the big brands like obviously Rolex, or the Martigue, Patek Philippe. But in so many ways, the market is still there. So the market has not yet moved to the independence. Whereas in other countries, there is a big, big success of independence. Um, sorry, I, I forgot Italia. <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 uh, we, we sold uh, some watches uh, to Italia, but uh, it's not a, it's not a, a big market for independence at the moment. But not for us, maybe for others. Um, it's always it's always the same thing that you have um, a watch market. There, the collectors buy big brands, and then. Um, if they have a lot of watches, then they are looking to the left or to the right, and then they see, ah, there's a different market with the independence. And then they yeah. come uh, interesting in, uh, in, in the independence. So, uh, why do you think? I'm not going to ask you if you prefer the independence to the big brands, but why do you think independents are so successful, and what, where is the value in independence? Um, the success of of the independence if that's it's let me see i have some made the the success of the independence is um i think in the last years the people the the customer wants to know the people behind the brands um then you have you have special special watchmakers um they have a lot of knowledge they can they can build the watch from the from the design or start with the design construction and then they can do the finish and and the most of the independence they they can do all the steps in the yeah. completely process and that's yeah, whereas in a big brand there are different departments there is yeah department of course of you course, see you, the department yeah. for the assembling, decoration, and the urological complications. Yeah, yeah, and and you normally and uh, you can't find um, people they can do all the steps together. Maybe that's the reason for the for the Obviously, for the independence. The the George Daniels' approach, no, of being able to master all the phases of uh, watchmaking from A to Z. Yeah, yeah, but George, and it's it, it, maybe. It, it is, this guy was unbelievable, um, but maybe he is the the reason um, and all the communications around that um, that the independents are coming more and more up in the in the mind of the collectors. Uh, what they what they what the what they do, and what what is the the real value of what they do. So, also I think collectors are also seeing that every time there is a crisis, you go around the shops, you can see. Big, big volumes of this luxury, you know, uh, industrially. Yeah, of course. And so you lose a bit the perception of value because you go to Hong Kong, you go to Milan, you go to New York, you go to London, you see the same big quantities of these watches that are supposed to be exclusive. But actually you see them on the shelves. Whereas on a production like an independent like yourself, whatever you produce is sold. It's not made to go on a shelf of a of a of a store. No, basically, basically that's yeah. that's the, yeah, that's the beauty of it. There was a question from one of our followers, uh, Stefan, is saying, "Do you see a second a secondary market for Kudoki watches already?" Um, not not like other brands that you can. Also, normally you can't find um, a used watch at the moment. Maybe in the future. Um, I think the the reason is that our production is too small, and if the yeah. customer, <laughs> if if the yeah. customer get get the watch, maybe normally they 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 put it in in yeah in a safe or they wear it or yeah. Well, they, they yeah they are convinced that they want it rather than they trade it. And, yeah. uh, I just had a check on a on a on a famous platform for secondary secondary market, and there is one Kudoku watch. Really. Uh, 
uh, yeah, it's the K2, the K2 with the white dial. Okay. Just one, just one. Right, that's it. It's interesting, interesting. Uh, another question. Um, so we have a, yeah, we have some Italian friends as well. Ciao, Luigi. Mi fa piacere vederti. Guarda questi kudok che sono fantastici. Um, a question from Ula Leila asking, and it was one of my questions, where do you get your inspiration these days? Um, normally, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking all, the whole day about watches. So that's, that's my passion. I'm, if I'm finished with my work on the workbench, then uh, in the night I read work, watchmaking books. I'm looking for old um, watchmaking pictures, watches from the past, um, and then I'm, I'm thinking about new ideas and make some combinations. Yeah, that's, that's one point. And the other point is, um, for example, I'm, I'm looking in the nature. If I go in, in, in outside in the world and then always um, I'm thinking about new ideas. The most ideas coming when, when, um, when I'm cycling. Oh, so, yeah. 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 Uh, same with me when I run. <laughs> when I do running or I do surfing. Yeah. Uh, interesting. And um, so what do you think? And it's also a question from O. Lloyd. What is the future of Kudoki watches? Are you going to develop more on the artistic side or more on the orological side? Uh, because, of course, the Kunstwerk was more artistic. And yep. The Hunter is more orological uh, development. Are, you, are they going to be parallel in the future or you have new ideas that are going to come up? Uh, it's, yeah, some ideas about Kunstwerk collection, some ideas for new models in the handwerk collection, and also ideas for to put both together. So, okay. um, um, I have a lot of new ideas uh, for new for new products, but the point is, at the moment, um, because of our success, I, I don't have the time to develop uh, new things. Uh, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm, I'm working all the, all the day uh, on the workbench, so... Thank you, because we are going to receive our four watches already next week, which we are very, very excited. And uh, we have a few more orders as well, because we are seeing the, the success also on the limited edition for Kudoki, Kudoki watches. Uh, so, Lo o Lloyd is also asking, what is the current lead time to order a Kudoki uh, timepiece that you can order directly from... A, from Kudoki, but if you want to leave Stefan Kudoki in peace, you know, obviously making his own watches, the limited edition is also obviously the official retailer in the UK. What is the lead time, Stefan? Um, if you place the, uh, an order this year, I think we are now um, with the lead time next year in in March. Okay. Yeah. But I but I'm not sure uh, uh, because my my wife is doing the the planning. Yeah process yeah. so but i think uh, at the moment uh, we are eight nine up to ten months yeah. so so i have to say thank you to you and uh, eve as well because we managed to have uh, our pieces a little bit quicker than that which is great so uh oh lloyd um you can send me an email and even for the limited edition of code uk if you're thinking of a specific model we can let you know what the lead time is um you're talking about cycling, uh, Stefan. I'm a big sports person myself. And uh, there is a question from Click Talk asking, have you ever considered a sports watch that maybe you can use when you cycle? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 normally, I do only watches what, what I like. Uh, and sport watches, they, they, that doesn't interest me. <laughs> yeah, okay. So because okay. the point is... Um, the most thing uh, for me it's traditional watchmaking. So if I, so I'm concentrate on on this. So that's that's enough. Uh, I cannot yeah. I cannot use or I cannot develop um, next to our traditional things sport watches. Uh, and then you have a lot of uh, a big collection. Um, so I can't and I won't. I don't. And that's and that's independence again, Stefan. You do what you want. 
you yeah, know, of course. Big, you know a big brand where you, you need to have a dress watch, a diving watch, a sports watch, a chronograph, a tourbillon, yep. and a minute of people. So, yeah. um, absolutely. Th those decisions are made by the big groups. They're not made by the watchmakers. No? Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Watches and Words is asking, which material or technique you would like to work with in the future? Can you, can you give some, uh, uh, some anticipations or, as you said, you're too busy at the moment? Uh, I, I have not uh, think about it. We are working with steel cases at the moment, with gold cases uh, and classic uh, materials in, in the movement area. So I don't know. We will see what's going on in the future. So Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I have a classic question, Stefan, and uh, normally I always get the same answer. We'll see if I can, I can win with you. When I ask a watchmaker what is your, his favorite uh, timepiece from his collection they they always answer you cannot choose from your different kids they are all the same for you but can you choose a watch in your collection that was very important for you and it will always have a special place for you yeah that's the kudoka too because uh, that's the watch who uh, what was um, winning or get the the GPHG award, so uh, and this was a game changer, I would say. So because after that, with the, with this watch, we are now in the in the mindset of international collectors, uh, and we we wasn't before. So I so think that that's, was a real turning point for you. Yeah, that was a turning point. Yeah, and that yeah. was 2019. Yeah, when obviously yeah. you won. A Degree, yeah. which is, it takes me to the next of the last uh, questions I have. Petit Degree is a very special prize, uh, Stefan, because it uh, rewards timepieces that offer exceptional value for the prize, because these are the timepieces below 10,000 Swiss francs. And uh, so the question is, how, how important it is for you to keep prices up uh, uh, reasonable, even with the amount of um, craftsmanship that you force yourself to put into your watches, because we're talking about in-house movements that you developed in collaboration with Abring, of course, but there's a lot of in-house work in, your, in, the, in the orological part, and there is a massive amount of work in the decoration, in the finishing, and all of that. How important was it for you to keep the price reasonable? Um, we may we have a strategy um, the last years so um, if you look in the watch market you see all the watches with the very very high prices um, from the brands and our philosophy was we do a, a good watchmaking job and we don't spend a lot of money in advertisement yeah. so and normally the customer have to pay including the advertisements so uh, that that's uh, that's maybe the main reason why we can do a product um, with this value for this for this price um, so that's my philosophy you get you get the real value for for your money uh, so the other thing is that if we do do it this way it takes more and more time to to uh, to get popular in the watch market because you cannot advertise on on every page in a in a magazine or uh, you cannot go to to every watch fair uh, normally in the world so we we are quite underrated maybe so yeah absolutely but the result as we always say stefan is um, is that the inner value of the product is very close to the retail value. So what the customer is actually paying in the end is very close to what the real value of the watch is, which is not, of course, the, you know, I come from a big group when I started in, in the watch industry. Yeah. It's not obviously the case for uh, the big brands that are leveraging more on, on the status. Of course, they produce as well fantastic products because, you know, some of the big brands. Yeah, are of course. Products. But the, the, the gap between the real retail price and the inner value of the watch is is 
bigger. Uh, that's a fact, I guess. Yeah, and uh, also a reason for that is uh, if you have a big company, you have a um, a lot a lot of overhead costs. So, and yes. you you if you are independent and you work by your own on the workbench, there's no overhead costs, not not so much overhead costs. So, that's yes. that's um, also a reason for for the price range. I think I think. It has to be said that without the social medias, probably all of these would, would have not happened for the independence because then that was the way to get the message. Uh, yeah, of course. Of course. If you, if, you, if you remember 15 years ago, without the social media, uh, nobody knows the independent watchmakers. So uh, on, only, only the, um, the Basel World uh, watch booth fair, there was some... And it, but it's it was not the success like um, in these days. So yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, very, very interesting. So once again, uh, we are with Stefan Kudoki, uh, the German watchmaker from Saxonia, uh, Kudoki Kudoki watches. It's been great to have you, Stefan, and it's been nice to see all the questions that we had. I am checking if I have uh, if I have missed a few. Uh, J W Winog is saying Indy is the way to go. And yeah, we are seeing we are seeing that uh, big time. Uh, I'm seeing if I missed any of uh, of the questions. And I have to thank you for your time, Stefan. This is the first uh, conversation we have, and I'm so excited because we are receiving the watches as well next week. So there will be a lot of uh, photo shooting and videos that we're gonna share to show your art uh, firsthand. For this interview, will be available on our Instagram. Uh, TV, IGTV, and if you have any more questions for Stefan, I am sure we can pass the question to uh, questions to to him. And uh, what to say, Stefan? I am. Um, I look forward to have another meeting like this, and I wish you all the best for your work uh, in the future. And congratulations for where you have uh, what you have achieved so far. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And one yep. day, one day. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Is it one thing I wanted to ask actually that I was going to forget? Is it possible to visit your premises in uh, in your workshop in Saxonia? And after the, the you know obviously the COVID emergency, do you plan to uh, you know to be able to share uh, your uh, your workshop? to uh, collectors, to uh, uh, people that are passionate about Yeah, 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 of course. Um, uh, we do it also in the past before Corona. Um, um, and after that, we, we will do it again. Yeah, if somebody will come and visit. Yeah. And then... Not too, not too much because you need time to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I realize that. <laughs> I realize yeah. that. Um, Listen, vielen Dank. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. It's yeah. been a pleasure, Stefan. Thank you very much. And yeah, sorry for my, for my bad English. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's absolutely perfect. And thank you. And thank you, Eve, as well, for her great, great uh, support. Uh, because uh, I know how important it is to have somebody uh, capable and strong. And, uh, you know, yep. such a that, that, that's more important than to build the watches. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Stefan. You thank you. Care, and I'll see you very soon. Yep. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye bye. bye. bye.